Well, let us now, uh, could you now tell us about Captain Mona Shindy? Was Captain Shindy appointed as the Chief of Navy's so-called strategic advisor on Islamic cultural affairs? Uh, I appointed her when I was Chief of Navy in that role. So yes, why was this done? Uh, because I felt that um, our diversity debate had become very um, concentrated on one issue and uh, I wanted a range of advisors on diversity issues and I implemented a, a, a range of appointments, including Captain Shindy. I also had a, an advisor, strategic advisor on Indigenous affairs and also into LGBT matters. In addition to the, um, the women's advisor that I already had. Okay, thank you. Um, can you inform the committee who is the Chief of Navy Strategic Advisor on Christian Cultural Affairs? The Principal Chaplain of the Navy. Thank you. And can you inform the committee who is the Admiral Strategic Advisor on Jewish Cultural Affairs? We don't have a, uh, Vice Admiral Tim Barrett, Chief of Navy. Uh, we do not have a specific um, member to cover that, but under the, uh, the ADF uh, Religious, Religious Advisory Council, uh, we have uh, members of each faith who are able to support the service chiefs in any matters they choose to discuss. So is there anyone on the committee who can inform, inform you of the Chief of Navy Strategic Advisor on Hindu, Buddhist or Zoroastrian cultural that, affairs? That's what the religious advisory... Directs. Across all gamuts, all okay. religions. It's a multi-faith, it's intended to be a multi-faith uh, advisory panel. But they don't cover Islam. Islam has its own dedicated uh, advisor. Well, Senator, it was really simple. We have um, around about 600,000 Muslims in Australia. That's a significant segment of our population. Most of the navies that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis, when I was, this is when I was Chief of Navy, uh, have significant Muslim populations. I was not happy that aspects around um, Islam were well, uh, well enough understood in the navy at the time, and I felt that I needed some additional advice. We deployed primarily into the Middle East or up into Southeast Asia where there are large Muslim populations. It was, in my view, a sensible measure to get additional advice so that I could understand uh, a range of issues relating to what is a significant world religion. Okay. How many Muslims do we have in the um, Australian Defence Forces? Around 100 in, um, in the permanent forces. Did Captain Mona Shindy use an official Navy Twitter account to criticise former Prime Minister Tony Abbott? Captain Shindy used... Sorry, Vice Admiral Tim Barrett, Chief of Navy. You don't have to keep... Yeah. Yeah. Just so I can hear that the microphone is working. Thank you. <laughs> I'll let you know if it isn't. Thank you. He will. Uh, Captain Shindy established a Twitter account that was used to... Uh, for her to be able to indicate uh, issues around Islamic matters that were relevant to Navy. Was it an official Navy Twitter account? It was an official Navy Twitter account. Thank you. And did she retweet anti-Western comments by the Muslim terrorist apologist Grand Mufti Ibrahim Abu Muhammad? It's my understanding she did, yes. Thank you. Isn't it true that Captain Shindy tweeted Quote, wait, did our new Prime Minister just give us a speech and not mention boats, death cult, security, death cult, terrorism, national security and death cult? I'm not specifically aware of that tweet, no. You're not aware of it? No. Did uh, Mona Shindy retweet the Grand Mufti claiming that, quote, racism and Islamophobia were partly to blame for the terrorist, Paris terrorist attacks? I'm not aware of that specific tweet not aware. either. Isn't it true that Shindy, in her official capacity and using an official Navy Twitter account, attacked the Australian Liberty Alliance Party in October last year, saying, quote, real shame to see these extreme, ill-informed fringe groups threatening hashtag community, hashtag cohesion, hashtag OSPOL, hashtag team human race? 
I haven't seen, I don't have that specific tweet, so I can't verify that's, uh, that's precise. Didn't Shindy defend Islamic violence in an article that she wrote for the United Services Institute in March 2015, in which she stated, quote, Jihad is armed struggle in the way of God. This is for the protection of the weak or oppressed, whoever they may be and whatever religion they follow. Armed jihad is defense against aggression and oppression. I'm aware she wrote an article. I don't have that in front of me, so I can't verify because I haven't seen what you're expressing there. Can you give me some assurance that you will be looking at it? I have looked at what Captain Shindy said, both in her Twitter account and also after her presentation to Rusi. Uh, I have closed the Twitter, the Twitter account as a consequence of what I read. Uh, and I have spoken to Captain Shindy over the role that she performed as the cultural advisor and those issues where she had been drawn into uh, a number of debates that we both agreed were not appropriate at the time. I still support Captain Shindy in the role that she had as the Islamic advisor at the time. You still support her? Isn't the She's still a captain in the Royal Australian Navy. I support her as a captain in the Royal Australian Navy, yes. On the opinions of an individual uh, member of the uh, ADF Senator, but suffice it to say, I think I placed very clearly on the record this morning the views of the government, views of this organisation in relation to the challenge that we face in the battle against Daesh, both in the uh, counter ISIL coalition uh, context that I referred to this morning and elsewhere. Aren't defence regulations quite specific about political activities and public attacks on the government by members of the ADF in an official capacity and the consequences for this? They are clear, yes, Senator. Why then are these regulations only being enforced selectively? I don't believe they are being enforced selectively. I spoke to Captain Shindy at the time where she made comment and where she was managing what I could see as fairly vitriolic responses which drew her into commentary. But at the it time- drew her we, into? Wasn't it her choice to engage? we both agreed was not appropriate. As a consequence, I closed the Twitter account down and I don't believe that at the time any action she had taken was willful. So I had considered what she had said and as a consequence, she remains in the service. So when Captain Shindy attacked the former Prime Minister, her choice, and expressed comments apparently supportive of acts of terrorism in an official capacity, she was not court-martialed nor dismissed from the ADF. I don't believe it's as you've characterised it, Senator. I would draw your attention then to Defence Instruction General DIG Admin 08-1, Public Comment and Dissemination of Official Information by Defence Personnel which states inter alia that, quote, defence personnel must ensure that they preserve the apolitical standing of the defence organisation and do nothing which might place in doubt the role of defence in effectively implementing Australian government policy. Are you aware of that? I'm aware of that, Senator. And further, I draw your attention to section 60 of the Defence Force Discipline Act 1982, which provides that a defence member is guilty of an offence if the member doesn't act or omits to perform an act that is likely to prejudice the discipline of or bring discredit on the defence force. This offence may attract a jail term. Isn't that true? I'm aware of that, Senator. Isn't that true, that it can attract a jail term? I'm aware of the act, yes, Senator. Shouldn't this apply to their commanders who allow this? I don't quite understand the circumstances of your question. Well, you're one of her commanders and you're allowing it to continue? Well, you're allowing her to I'm not, do not be punished? It's not continuing, Senator. She's not being punished for something that she decided to go into? Senator, at the time, I discussed with Captain Shindy. We both agreed that she had been drawn into commentary via a Twitter account. When I reviewed the Twitter account, I saw that it was full of vitriol and commentary that I believe she was unable to manage. We closed the Twitter account down. She agreed with that. As a consequence, I then counselled her on the role of the Islamic advisor and what it was meant to be. As a consequence of that, I saw no willful intent by her to continue with that role, and she has not subsequently done anything. 
Thank As a consequence, much. she that's remains in service. So in view of the clear... To, thank you, Senator Roberts. That's, the answer's been given. And uh, that's a very good spot to stop for afternoon tea. And we'll resume at 3.45. Senator Carr, you will be in continuation. And then Senator Rice following you. Thank you. 3.45.